Hey there, it's Clint again, back with another ZSSH and OIDC related video. This time we're going to be taking a look at ZSSH with regular certificate-based authentication, OIDC-only authentication, and certificate-based authentication plus OIDC for secondary auth. If you're not familiar with the ZSSH project, come on out to github.com slash openzd hyphen test hyphen kitchen slash ZSSH and find the ZSSH project. The readme will have uh, quick and easy set steps that you can use to test everything locally. And it'll require you to set some environment variables and run some ZD commands. You'll have to have a ZD overlay network. You'll have to have ZSSH. You'll have to have SSH. But once you get through all that, you'll be able to perform the same exact demonstration I'm about to show you all locally. Um, if you have any questions, just consult this page. It has all the same commands I'm going to run. Here's the setup that we're going to actually perform. I'm going to ZSSH from my computer through an OpenZD overlay network using a ZD Edge tunnel into, a ZS, into SSHD. That will let me Amazon, uh, SSH into my Amazon account without having SSHD exposed to the internet. So no port 22 being opened. I'm going to then do that with certificate based auth only, OIDC flow only via Keycloak. Keycloak is federated to GitHub, and so what will happen is I will authenticate to Keycloak, and Keycloak will submit my JWT bearer token to the OpenZD controller, which will then be verified against the Keycloak IDP, and then that will allow me to authorize or authenticate. And then I'll do the same thing, except I'll require both the strong identity, the X509 certificate from OpenZD, as well as secondary auth from Keycloak. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. Up here on the top window, you'll see I'm running ZD Edge Tunnel Run Host. Fun fact about Run Host is it doesn't require administrator access, so you don't need to be root to run this. You can run this as any user. Go ahead and run ZD Edge Tunnel Run Host using the ZSSH service server as the identity that will host SSHD. Notice that it's on a machine called Ubuntu at 172.31.47.200. Or this machine is running out in the Amazon cloud, as I showed before. This is my SSHD shell running out here. So first thing we'll do is we'll update our identity so that the identity uses uh, certificate-based authentication only. And so in this window right here, I run some ZD CLI commands. ZD edge update identity, the client identity, and give it the auth policy that is identity-based. We'll go ahead and run that. Now my Windows machine, which you can see on the bottom, can execute a ZSSH command, provide the client strong identity, X509 certificate, the OpenZD service, the identity file, which ZS, sorry, which SSHD requires, and then the username that we'll be connecting to, as you can see, it's Ubuntu. And then we're not connecting to 172.31.47.200, we're connecting to Z SSH service server. That is the identity that's running up here. That uses a feature of OpenZD called addressable terminators, which is a really neat feature. If you haven't seen it, it allows you to have multiple targets, but only one service. It's a nice feature. So let's go ahead and run Z SSH connect to that server and prove that it works. There we go. We're connected to our Ubuntu server. If I run ls up here, you'll see here's my information on that Ubuntu machine. And you'll see the same thing down here, but this time using Windows and ZSSH. So you don't even need OpenSSH on Windows, even though it comes with it nowadays. You can use ZSSH. All right, that's great. Let's move on and let's do the OIDC only flow. In this flow, ZSSH will federate to Keycloak, which is federated to GitHub, and then return back a JWT which ZSSH will use for authentication. So let's go ahead and run oops, the command that updates the identity to use the OIDC only authentication policy. Once that's done, we can then run ZSSH on our Windows machine. But do pay attention. We are no longer supplying the strong identity file, the X509 certificate. And because of that, we have uh, a couple extra things that we have to specify in our command. We still supply the identity, uh, sorry, the service 
that is going to be used to form the connection. We do supply the identity file that SSHD requires. This time we specify an OIDC only flag. If you don't specify OIDC only, ZSSH will expect that you are going to supply that strong identity in the form of a identity file from OpenZD, a JSON file. So we use OIDC only. We set the issuer of the JWTs that will be coming to OpenZD. We set the audience, minus N, uh, not minus N here. Minus N is the audience flag. We set a port and we set a controller URL. Because we don't have an OpenZD identity, we actually don't have the controller URL at our fingertips. An identity file will have that in it, but because we're doing OIDC only, we don't know the controller URL, we have to supply it. We supply Ubuntu again, again, the same username, and again, the same ZSSH server. And when I do that, you'll see my browser pops up. And when my browser pops up, it's asking me to log into my ZD realm on my Keycloak server. And so I'll just click GitHub because I have federated this Keycloak server to using either GitHub or Google. I've now been authenticated and can return to the CLI. I usually just close that tab right there. And then when I come back here, you'll see, bam, I'm inside the Ubuntu machine and I have successfully authenticated to the OpenZD overlay network using nothing but OIDC. All right, last but not least is the policy that requires identity and OIDC. If we look over on the page that um, the readme for the project, you'll see when we create the auth policy that is identity and OIDC, it sets primary certificate allowed and secondary required external JWT signer. So this secondary signer is necessary, which means you cannot authenticate if you don't follow this flow. So if I go through and I update my, my identity to use the identity and OIDC flow, let's go ahead and log out of our ZD realm. When I now connect to ZSSH using um, connected to the server using ZSSH. Oh, I copied not enough information. I provide ZSSH, the identity file, the service, the SSH key. I use minus minus OIDC, not OIDC only. I still have to supply the issuer. I still have to supply the audience. Uh, in Keycloak, the audience is the client name, so that's why this is OpenZD client. You can choose this. The port, I don't need to supply like I talked about, but I, I am anyway, just for demonstration purposes. And again, Ubuntu at ZSSH server. And I don't know if you noticed, but every time I do this, you'll see an incoming connection up here. Oh, but you can't see it because I have to log in first. We'll go ahead and click the GitHub button. I'm authenticated and can return to the CLI. There you go. You see uh, incoming connection has been received in the top window. Down here, you see I am connected to, oops, not LS. Uh, I'm connected to the Ubuntu server, and there you have it. So that's another video showing you how to use ZSSH with identities, identity plus OIDC, or just OIDC. If that's cool and exciting, uh, please go to GitHub and give the projects a star. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel, all that fun stuff. And as always, if you have any cool comments or fun comments or something doesn't work, leave a comment in the video. Uh, it does help the algorithm, as they say. So we'll see you next time. Bye.